Hey YouTube, it's CA Maritime History here back here for another video. And tonight, after a very long time not recording any videos, at least compared to last weekend, when I recorded like four a day, I haven't been feeling well if you have, if I forgot to mention that in my one video. Um, I, I really haven't. That's why I haven't done a lot of videos, also a lot of homework. So, hope you guys understand. And right now we're going to talk about the SS Line Antique, the very first ocean going ship that I know of at least, that has a shopping mall, or in modern day comparison that would be giant atriums on cruise ships. At the airs, at, at Chantiers, the St. Nazaire Penhoet built La Lantigue at St. Nazaire. Her keel was laid on, I hope we're going to butcher that, but it's impossible, on November the 28th, 1928. She was launched on April 15th, 1930, and completed on September 7th, 1931. The ship's length overall was 733 feet, and because of the shallowness of the Rio de la Plata, she was given a draw of only 29.5 feet and a usually broad beam of 92 feet. Sorry. Unusual for her time, she was assigned a very little shear and camber. Shear is like the ang the uh, angle of the ship's neck. I'm not sure what camber is. She displaced between 40,000 and 42,500 gross register ton. Actually, no, that was water. The gross register tonnage is 42,512. The ship's main engines were four sets of triple expansion steam turbines serving four propellers. They developed a total of 45,000 shaft horsepower and gave her a speed of 21 knots. This is a this is one of the very few illustrations that I found in the Land Antique. This is her dining room. She had berths for 1,238 passengers, of which 488 were in first class, 88 in second, and 662 in third, and 663 in crew. All of the first and second class cabins were outside cabins with a porthole. Outside, I know you can't see me, but I'm doing air quotes right now. Unusually, the ship had a companion way up to 20 feet wide running the, de running the leg of each of her passenger decks. There was a foyer at the center of the ship three decks high. This is what I mean, like the giant atriums and such. Like the shopping malls that are in the atriums. A lot of the antique had that. The ship's interior decor as, as well as several, 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 several other CGT liners, Comedy General Transatlantique, which I would talk at the end of this video. Trust me, there's, there's a lot more CGT coming to this channel. Was very, very, very Art Deco style. Very. Furnishings were designed by painter Albert Besnard. Sorry, I, if you hear me coughing, like I said, I still don't feel great. And architect Pierre Petou, Petois, one of the founders of the Art Deco style. Of, Messrs. Rajune at Millard. Decorations are largely made of glass, marble, and various woods, making for a more subdued atmosphere than on other CG ships such as Ile de France. That will be another video coming soon. Yes, I realize this is the picture from the title screen. There's not still a lot of pictures that I could find. I'm sure there's others out there that you guys will probably find and tell me about, but I haven't found any, except the ones you see here. La Atlantique made her maiden voyage between September 29th and October 31st, 1931. Her size, speed, and luxury exceeded the level of demand between Europe and South America, and she was seldom fully booked. She relied on a substantial subsidy from the French government to operate. In 1932, the height of her funnels were increased by 16.5 feet. I believe this is before the refit, this very grainy photograph here. You can see her funnels look a little more squat. Now, if you look at her uh, later pictures, like I believe I found one colorized one. I, I couldn't put that on it because I think it was copyright. But that one, the funnels appear to be much taller than this. Like I was surprised it wasn't the same ship. But it's 16.5 feet difference, so it's quite a bit of a difference. As you can see here, she is on fire. On January the 4th, 1932, while traveling between Bordeaux and Le Havre to be dry docked and repaired, the ship caught fire about 25 miles off Granzi. The fire was believed to have started in the first class St. Remo was discovered by the ship's crew at about about 0330 hours. The fire spread rapidly, killing 19 of the crew. By early morning, the ship's captain, Rene Schoofs, ordered the crew of 200 to abandon ship. Now, it doesn't say here that, um, like there were any passengers on board. Maybe it was a, um, yeah. It was going to be dry off, so there were no passengers on board. One of the first lifeboats to be launched was lost when the rose by which she was being lowered from her davits, which is what lowers the actual lifeboat, broke. 
seven or eight crewmen fell from her into the sea and drowned. The ship's wireless distress message reached the French Navy bases in Brest and Cherbourg. Four cargo ships in the area went to assist. One accounts then to the Hamburg America Line, Hamburg America Line motor ship Rare rescued some of the surviving crew. Another state to the Dutch steamship Achilles to rescue the last crew to leave the ship, including men who were in the water. Another account states that Thomas Henry Wilmot of Sunderland, first officer of the Collier Ford Castle, was in charge of a lifeboat which went alongside the burning liner at considerable list to pick up survivors that had been missed by other rescuing ships. For this, the French Ministry of Merchant Marine awarded him the Medaille de Salvatage. Take us to the right. Sal salvatage? Not, not sabotage, but like a salvage, I guess is what it means. And the owners of the line land he presented him with a golden watch. Here she is smoking from pretty much every opening on her. You can see all smoke's coming out of the funnels, like it's in the boiler rooms and such. The fire buckled some of her hull plate, and by late afternoon she was listening 20 degrees to port, or, you know, she was sinking. She drifted northeast, and on January the 5th she came within three nautical miles of the island of the Isle of Portland on the English coast. Nine tugs towed the still burning ship to, Cher to Cherbourg. Operation took 30 hours, during which several of the tugs were damaged. The New York Times claimed that on the 5th of January, this is the aftermath now, the French Ministry of Marine issued a statement saying the ship was considered a total loss. In fact, the fire was not extinguished until January 8th, and the ship's fate was not decided for another three years. After the fire was extinguished, the bodies of five of her crew were found in the lower part of the ship, only two were identifiable. What that means is, the fire burned them so bad, only two of them were recognizable. The fire had gutted her accommodation from A to F deck, and her plates were buckled, meaning they were pretty much melted above the waterline, but her engines and boiler rooms were relatively undamaged. Her owners wanted the ship written off as a total loss, but her underwriters contended that she was not beyond economic repair. The hull remained at Cherbourg while the committee of experts was appointed, which obtained repair estimates from ship owners. Eventually, the underwri underwriters agreed that La Antique was beyond e economic repair. They paid company the navigation site Atlantique, not to be confused, company General Transatlantique, the equivalent of United States dollars 6.8 million or UK 2 million, 2 million pounds for the loss. In February 1936, La Atlantique was sold for scrap and towed to Port Glasgow, where the company of Smith and Houston started breaking her up in March. Her owners used her insurance settlement to order a smaller but faster replacement ship of past year which was launched in 1938 and completed in 1939. This is a Yankee Devotion Letter fires. You think CGT would learn after Atlantique disaster happened? Nope. The Paris disaster happened. And then, I'm pretty sure all of, all of you know about this one. I'll explain. Long Atlantique was one of five. Now, of course, you only see three. A, I couldn't find pictures of Lafayette because this was being converted to a troop ship when it was sunk, and all I found were pictures of this. <coughs> Sorry. Four of these letters belong to CGT. In May 1932, oh, that's right, Messageries Maritimes motor ship Georges Lepar had burned and sunk on her maiden voyage with the loss of 54 lives. The fire aboard the Atlantic came only eight months later, so this is the Atlantic down here. In 1935, French government responded with new regulations. The use of wood was banned at vulnerable, vulnerable, vulnerable points such as stairs and lift shafts or elevators. Carpets and fabric wall hangings had to be treated with fire retardants. By the way, this happened on Normandy. She had a state-of-the-art fire system, but of course, it was, you know, not on when the burning happened. Crews must train to fight fires, and any ship of more than 15,000 tons must carry three professional firemen. Despite the new regulations, there were more fires. In May 1938, CGT's Lafayette, the only ship I can't have a picture of here because I couldn't find it, was destroyed by fire in Dry Dock and Le Havre. In April 1939, CGT's Paris, pictured here, caught fire and capsized also in Le Havre. Here's the thing though. When Normandy, this one here, was backing out of her dock to go on her maiden voyage, she almost bumped into this, which I find slightly ironic considering she meet the same fate only a few years later. And in 1942, CGT's flagship SS Normandy caught fire and capsized in New York on the Atlantic ship. 
So this is the story of the decade of ocean liners in the La Atlantique. Probably my next video is either going to be USS New Jersey or SS Sultana. I'm putting some video ideas on hold. Some of them I want to do, you know, now. But all video ideas will eventually be on the channel. I have a long list that gets longer every day. My friends give me lots of video ideas. So, trust me, there'll be a lot more videos out soon. Hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, video. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And bye.